Welcome back, I've got a variable neutral density filter to look at for today's video and this was sent in via K and F concept. I'll be doing a few tests later on to see how this stacks up in the real world but I'll just show you what you get included with the packaging. Quite a nice circular case that comes with this. It seems to be made out of uh, good quality plastics and it doesn't seem like much but when you've got a filter like this you want to keep it somewhere safe and when you've got a good quality case that helps you to do that obviously rather than rolling around in the bag getting dirty. So keep the foam padding in there because that stops the filter from moving around when you've got it closed. This has a fairly low profile for a neutral density filter that is variable. The basis for this is two polarizers together and you adjust it and the two of them cancel out the light that comes through or let more light through. So then you've also got hard stops on this as well as markings for the maximum and minimum settings. The range that you have here they're quoting from ND2 up to a 32 and it feels quite smooth on this just about enough tension there and not too much so that it won't move out of place by accident. In case there's any confusion or doubts about the ND filters, I've put a graph up here which is sourced from Wikipedia and that will explain to you the different types of filters that there are and you can have a look through that. So they've got coatings on both sides with this and this is priced around about the £50 mark so it's not very expensive but it's not super budget either so they're saying they've worked on this with new coatings and made it significantly better than their previous one. I haven't tried their cheapest one that was out so just a case of buying the right filter size and in this case I've 77 millimeters so get the biggest that you need and then use stepping rings if you need to use it on your smaller lenses it works out much more cost effective in the long run. I'm going to do some practical tests now just to see the range of the filter it did briefly come up with 500th of a second but when I turn it right the way down you will see that the range is perhaps a little bit less than the five stops that they quoted. As soon as you put this on the camera lens you are losing a stop so I'd say it's a touch under the five stops but probably not a huge problem. Here's a quick example of shutter speeds here one hundredth of a second you can see the movement is almost frozen in the particles of water and a much slower shutter speed you get a more natural emphasis of movement and that's quite important particularly for video work. Here I have a stills photo taken at five seconds exposure which I wouldn't have been able to do without the filter. On to the sharpness test. There's a very slight difference looking at a 24 megapixel crop 100% between the filter and not having the filter so slightly sharper without but there isn't a big hit to sharpness. You're not going to see that if you're shooting 4K. On to the color balance just a very slight change no big shifts on the color balance just some minor changes to the hues of the greens I notice and can sometimes be slightly warmer but much better than the cheap filters that I tested no issues with the rendering in the out of focus areas no detrimental effects by using the filter so based on my limited use of a few of these this is definitely quite a good little one to have doesn't have the X pattern either when you rotate it to its maximum degree and it has very minimal color cast and there isn't a big impact on image quality. So if you've got any questions, drop them below and thanks for watching the video. I will see you soon.